Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. The Roadrunners win the West and the San Antonio boy beats the odds after he was shot. Good Sunday morning. I'm Alicia Barrera and we have the latest details on those stories. Plus the latest on that deadly crash that shut down Highway 90. This weekend, family and friends remember a veteran of SAPD, an officer who was killed in the line of duty. We'll have that story coming up. And taking a live look out at the Alamo City, 66 degrees to start your Sunday morning. A little clearer than how we started yesterday, but what is the rest of the weekend? What does Thanksgiving week look like? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. But for now, 6 o'clock this morning, Sunday, November 21st. Alicia Rivera said it best. The Roadrunners winning big last night. It's a big deal. Big deal. We got our, our blue and orange. Yeah, we're all, we're all coordinated in UTSA colors. Look at that. I had to represent. Oh, yeah. Meet, meet. Be meet, awesome. meet, meet, meet. Yeah, that was a crazy game. I'm oh. sure you're going to be talking about in sports a little bit later on. So then. excited. Yeah, you know, not as foggy as yesterday morning around San Antonio, but we could actually see fog build here before we see the sunrise. And there is fog, especially along and southeast of I-35. Visibility down to a quarter of a mile in Gonzales, down to four miles in Pleasanton, and it's cloudy out there. In fact, today it's going to be hard for us to see much sunshine. I think we'll get a few peaks the sun in the afternoon, but generally it's going to be a mostly cloudy day. We are expecting a cold front though right at around 4 p.m. So close to dusk, we'll be seeing that front move through. Winds will be switching around from the south to the north at 10 to 20, gusting up to about 30 miles per hour, bringing a small chance 20% for an isolated shower or storm and then making it windy in the evening hours. So we're going to see this humidity, which has been fairly oppressive over the last about 24 hours or so that cold front is going to get that humidity out of here by tomorrow morning. It'll be nice and dry uh, holiday week ahead. I'll tell you what you can expect for Thanksgiving in just a few minutes. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Top stories this morning. New details on the mother of three who died in a crash on the city's west side. Plus an update on that four year old who was shot last month. What we're learning about his condition. Our Alicia Barretta joins us live with the details on these stories and more. Good morning, Alicia. Good morning, Max and Sarah. Well, let's start with the latest on that deadly crash. We spoke to the family of Brenda Lee Ibarra. She's the woman who died Friday after she crashed her vehicle off Highway 90 and near Callahan Road. San Antonio police say she lost control of her truck, her truck and crashed into a trans guide sign. Ibarra's mother and namesake says she thinks her daughter fell asleep at the wheel. If you feel tired, take a nap in your car or call somebody to take you home or somebody to drive you home. Ibarra's family lit candles and wrote on balloons for her vigil. They later released those balloons to honor her life. They say her arrangements will be made on Monday and Ibarra's wish was to be cremated. Now to a story we've been following very closely about a four year old who was shot last month. Well, early this week, we got to see Romeo return home from the hospital. Yesterday, the community gathered at Comanche Park for a plate sale to raise money for his hospital expensive expenses. Originally, doctors told his mother after being shot in the spine, he would have trouble walking, but he beat the odds. As you can see, he even got to ride a motorcycle for the first time. Seeing him on it, my nerves are kind of crazy, but he loved every minute of it. It was nice. We're trying to show Romeo that it's more to life. Like, you know, don't worry about the wheelchair. It's there, but just pretend it's not there. A strong little boy. SAPD is still searching for the drive-by shooting suspect. That shooting happened on October 24th on Woodville Drive. Anyone with information is asked to contact police. Now to the gridiron, where UTSA's 11-0 football record means its fan base is growing fast. More fans means bigger crowds and added security measures. And a few weeks ago, San Antonio police started bringing its Raven drone. That's the unit to, that they brought to tailgates to, due to increased crowds. They used the bird's eye view at tailgates to help with crowd control and traffic flow. They continue to win. The crowd size keeps growing. Uh, so we need to adjust our traffic patterns and our flows to make sure we can get everybody to and from the game safely. 
The drones can zoom in about three miles and it pinpoints a person or even an incident in a large crowd. The pilots can even live stream what they're seeing to officers on the ground phones so they know what they're walking into before they get get there and these drones are used in tactical situations they can even recreate scenes in a 3d way and they of course hope to grow this program at utsa well at sapd to read more about this this story and the ones that we talked about you can head over to ksat.com reporting alicia barrera ksat 12 news thank you alicia the community of pleasanton in mourning today after superintendent dr matthew mann suddenly passed away an announcement on man's passing posted on the district's Facebook page saying man had a heart attack earlier in the week. He never recovered. In a statement, a district spokesperson said, quote, Dr. Mann was a dynamic leader who made deep connections with the people of Pleasanton ISD and the community, and he will be greatly missed by all of us, end quote. Dr. Mann has been with the district since 2012. Well, this weekend marks the somber anniversary of the death of SAPD Detective Benjamin Marconi. Family and friends gather yesterday to remember the life of Detective Marconi. Five years ago Saturday, Marconi was shot and killed outside of SAPD headquarters while sitting in his patrol vehicle. Just this past August, Otis McCain was convicted and sentenced to death for killing the 20-year veteran. Well, Turkey Day is just a few days away. A new poll shows that 7 in 10 Americans say they plan to gather with friends and families who they don't live with for Thanksgiving. Health officials are urging everyone who is eligible to get vaccinated. ABC's correspondent Christine Sloan has the latest. America on the move. The TSA says it screened 2.2 million passengers across the country on Friday, the highest number since early in 2020, with 7 in 10 Americans saying they plan to gather with friends and family they don't live with for Thanksgiving. Health officials are urging everyone who is eligible to get vaccinated. You have to create your so-called wall of prevention or the circle of safety is what we call it by having families and friends around you be fully vaccinated. When it comes to holiday gatherings, the CDC also says if you're unvaccinated, you should wear a mask if gathering with others indoors and don't host or attend a gathering if you are sick or have symptoms. Ahead of the busy travel season and colder temperatures that are increasingly sending people indoors, the CDC has given the green light for a booster shot of either the Pfizer or Moderna of vaccines for all adults. But the hope is that it will reduce those breakthrough cases, reduce hospitalizations, reduce deaths, reduce transmission and severe illness. CVS and Walgreens already administering those booster shots. Many Americans getting their extra shot over the weekend. We're closing in on 70,000 uh, people who have gotten their boosters in the county. I just thought it was a wise thing to do. Trying to be careful, but uh, it, it could not possibly hurt to get a booster. The decision from the CDC comes as at least 30 states are seeing a rise in cases of at least 10 percent over over the past two weeks. As cases continue to rise, so does the death toll. More than 770,000 American lives lost. The latest data from the CDC and Johns Hopkins University shows more people have died from the virus this year than in 2020. Christine Sloan, ABC News, New York. In your morning headlines, a terrifying situation, chaos and panic erupting at the nation's busiest airport after travelers heard gunfire. So take a look. This happened yesterday at Hartsfield Jackson International Airport in Atlanta. Police say a TSA officer noticed the gun inside a man's luggage as it went through the x-ray machine. As the officer was attempting to hand search the bag, the man began tussling with the officer for the bag. He ended up accidentally firing the weapon. Immediately, people began ducking, running for cover, thinking there was an active shooter. The man, who turned out to be a convicted felon, took off. He was later found and arrested. Airport officials grounded flights for a brief time before the all clear was given. No reports that anyone was shot, but police do report that three people were injured as a result of all the panic. And that's not what people want to hear, especially as millions are expected to head to the airports over the next week for holiday travel. This weekend is already a record breaker for Thanksgiving air travel. The Transportation Security Administration says more than two million people pass through U.S. airport security checkpoints alone on Friday. That's the highest checkpoint volume for a single day since the start of the pandemic. AAA predicts Thanksgiving travel overall will rebound to near pre-pandemic levels with more than 53 million Americans expected to be on the move. TSA anticipates that the Sunday after Thanksgiving will likely see the highest numbers of air travels with people returning. 
Headed overseas, Austria's mandatory lockdown now in effect, but not before a public display of opposition. Some 38,000 demonstrators gathered in Hero Square in Austria to march in protest of the Austrian government's national lockdown and the country's February 2022 mandatory vaccine order. People came from all over Austria to voice their frustrations with the government. Some protesters say their biggest concern was the economy. They're worried it could crash. Austria has already had three different lockdowns. Time now, 610, 66 degrees out. It's all about the blue and orange Ooh, mask. That is right. Drape downtown San Antonio. Fans pack the streets, pack the dome, and they are now part of Roadrunner history. Still ahead, we got you covered on all the highlights. We're going to tell you if UTSA grabbed their 11th straight win of the season and what comes next. And UIW is illuminating your path into the holiday spirit. Coming up next on GMSA, we're sharing with you the annual beautiful display of lights now open to the public. And taking a quick live look outside, clearer than how we started yesterday. What is the rest of the day? What does Thanksgiving week look like? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey. Good morning and welcome back. Holiday staple here in San Antonio, officially open to the public at the University of the Incarnate Word. Millions of spectators. Spe well, not just spectators. Not just spectators. <laughs> Spectacular Christmas lights on display for the 35th annual Light the Way Holiday Festival. KSAT's own Steve Spreester was the event's MC, and joining him was our own festival first timer, KSAT's Stephania Jimenez. Last year's event was a drive through mm. because of the pandemic, but now organizers say Aww. people can once again enjoy the lights in person. The lights will be up for all to enjoy through early January. That's awesome, guys. Great uh, weather tonight. It'll be a little cooler once the front moves through. But first, we've got some fog out there, not as bad as yesterday. Uh, but you can see along in southeast of San Antonio, visibility is down to a quarter of a mile in Gonzales. And it is warm this morning. It's 67 degrees. We usually see a high temperature awfully close to 67 this time of year. In fact, look at the 24 hour temperature change. This time yesterday, we were in the 40s and 50s. So we're about 15 to 20 degrees warmer to start our Sunday. You're going to feel that humidity all day long. You can see that there's some things churning across the Great Lakes. Low pressure system there going to be swinging a cold front through San Antonio this afternoon. That front is currently in North Texas. As you can see behind the front, temperatures are much cooler. It's 43 in Amarillo and 48 in Lubbock. Uh, again, a 20 degree temperature difference from the panhandle to us here in San Antonio, and it's much drier behind Behind this front too. Dew points are in the 20s. That is some desert dry air there. Uh, we've got some Gulf of Mexico moisture rich air. Let me take you through the future cast for the day today. That front is expected to arrive between about 2 and 4 p.m. here in San Antonio and with it an isolated shower or storm is possible, but really the better chance for rain today is south of Highway 90. So Catula, Pleasanton, Gonzalez. These areas have about a 30% chance for isolated isolated showers when that front moves through. Now behind that front, it is going to get fairly windy. We'll have wind gusts of up to about 30 to 35 miles per hour late tonight. So again, uh, although we're not expecting very windy conditions, if you do have any uh, light Christmas decorations that are outdoors, you may want to consider uh, bringing those in or at least tying them down. Again, tonight winds could gust up to about 30 to 35 miles per hour from the north. So just once again, it's going to stay fairly cloudy for the day today. Clouds are going to be in the sky with a few peaks of sunshine this afternoon, but that's when that front is going to move through. We'll get up to about 76 degrees, a 20% chance for an isolated shower. We're not going to see widespread rain by any means around San Antonio. And then this evening is when those winds will turn around to the north, gusting up to 30 to 35 miles per hour. Then tomorrow and Tuesday, it's going to be nice and pleasant with low humidity. So that means chilly mornings and comfortable afternoons. We'll see a brief return of humidity by Wednesday and then Thanksgiving Day. A cold front is going to move through. What does that mean for us? Well, we are going to see scattered showers and storms on Thanksgiving Day. Until then, Wednesday, as I mentioned, the humidity will be back and temperatures will be back in the 70s for the high temperature on Wednesday. So not too warm, not too humid, but noticeable. Then that front's going to move through on Thanksgiving Day, bringing us a chance for scattered showers 
showers and storms, especially in the first part of the day uh, on Thanksgiving. And then by Black Friday, our highs are only going to be near 60 degrees. So that front on Thursday, Thanksgiving Day, is going to be more strong uh, and stronger rather than the front that's going to be moving through this afternoon. Again, very pleasant tomorrow and Tuesday with low humidity, scattered showers and storms possible Thanksgiving Day, and a much cooler forecast as we head into next weekend. Max and Sarah. It's Sarah Spivey. Thank you so much. 618, 66 degrees out. Well, still to come on GMSA, young people come together in Venezuela to accomplish a musical feat fit for the record books. Ooh. We'll explain. And coming up, UTSA Roadrunners. Big dogs, big win, division champs, game and play of the year. We have all the highlights. Take a look at those Powerball numbers. Pick three, six, two, zero, Fireball seven, daily four, five, one, one, six, Fireball nine. Your cash five, 10, 26, 28, 34, 35. Lotto, Texas, eight, 11, 34, 42, 49, 53. And here we go. The Powerball estimated to be $213 million. 40, 43, 48, 59, 69. Powerball 19, power play three. Good luck. We'll be right back. Good morning, welcome back. If you're a UTSA Roadrunner fan, you already know Big W yesterday. They faced the toughest challenge of the season, hosting UAB in front of 35,000 fans just behind me. The play of the day, the play of the season. Frank Harris dropped the snap, picked it up. Third down, four seconds left, and that is how they would win it in front of 35,000 fans. It was amazing. They came back down multiple times. Love the 2-1-0 on the helmet. It was just great stuff. Love this freeze frame because you actually get to see the 2-1-0 on the helmet. This is for the 2-1-0. So they wrap up the regular season this coming Saturday in Denton at 1 p.m. And then December 3rd, they are hosting the Conference USA Championship here at the Alamo Dome. Got to fill the dome. You could feel the excitement. Everyone crowded in the field. A little stressful at that one point. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> it was palpable. I'm like sitting there. I'm like, win. Win the game. Well, they won San Antonio's heart so they far. They did. Good job, UTSA. Yeah. Go Red Runners. 623, 66 degrees home. Well, it's a musical presentation on a world scale, and it was accomplished by young children and teens. We'll show you on GMSA after the break. The title of World's Largest Orchestra now belongs to a group in Venezuela. And get this, the group mostly made up of children. It's awesome. Thousands of Venezuelan musicians, most of them children and adolescents, have earned the title of the world's largest orchestra, more than 8,500 musicians ranging in age between 12 to 77 set a new Guinness Ooh. World Record. Over 250 supervisors were assigned to each group of musicians to observe during the record attempt. The previous record belonged to a Russian group that played that country's national anthem. Congratulations. Oh, yeah, congratulations. And they were all harmonious together. Together. <laughs> 627, 66 degrees out. Well, straight ahead on GMSA, we've got another reason for you to try and drop bad habits. Uh-oh. We're going to tell you about the physical effect they could have on your body and your brain. Plus, powerhouse no more? Question mark? The Texas Longhorns dropping another game, continuing a slide. Ooh, six in a row. We're going to have highlights mm -hmm. next. San Antonio is looking a little brighter these days. Good morning, I'm Alicia Barrera, and just ahead here on GMSA, the latest on the drive through holiday displays you'll be able to enjoy with your family. Good morning, 6.30 this morning, Sunday, November 21st. You wanna know why it's all so bright or why everyone's smiling? Why, Max? Because UTSA won 11 and 0. Go Roadrunners. It's an exciting Sunday morning. We coordinated. We. You have blue. Sarah Spivey? We did coordinate. Check it out. Beep, beep. Boom. <laughs> I got UTSA orange on. Nice. <laughs> there you go. Uh, well, we are seeing some fog out there this morning, although it's not as dense as yesterday. Let's take a look at the visibility. You can see that mainly along and east of 35. That's where we're dealing with the fog, although dew points are continuing to rise. So it's entirely possible here that within the next hour or so we could get some uh, pockets of dense fog around the metro area as well. And it's going to stay fairly cloudy today. We're really not going to see all that much sun.
again until the afternoon when we could get a few peaks of sunshine, but that's about it. It's going to be humid today, but then a cold front right at around 4 p.m. is going to sweep away the humidity, bring windy conditions, and temperatures will fall back into the 50s by the start of the day tomorrow. Uh, and again, you can see that the humidity is just going to be swept away by this front this afternoon. Dew points will fall by nearly 30 degrees, so a nice start to the holiday week. But coming up in the forecast, we'll tell you what you can expect on Thanksgiving. Looks like we will have rain at some point on Thanksgiving Day. Max, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, a woman in critical condition after a crash on 410 near Perrin Beidle. Here's what we know right now. Police tell us the vehicle she was in. She was a passenger. It was traveling on the westbound frontage road, attempting to pull into the parking lot of the Diamonds Gentlemen's Club. At the last minute, police tell us the driver of that vehicle changed his mind, pulled back onto the frontage road. That's when he was hit by another vehicle. The woman who was injured, she was taken to BAM seat with life-threatening injuries. The driver of the second vehicle taken into custody for a possible DWI. Well, power outages here in Texas could happen again this winter. That is if the state experiences a cold snap that forces many power plants offline at the same time as demand for power is high. The news is coming from an analysis by the Electric Reliability Council of Texas. The outages could occur despite better preparations by power plants to operate in cold weather. Heading into the winter, ERCOT considered five extreme scenarios in a risk assessment of the state's power supply. The grid operator estimates both how much electricity Texans are expected to demand and how much electricity power plants are expected to produce ahead of each season. You can read more about this story right now on KSAT.com. New government research shows Americans died of drug overdoses in record numbers across the country. In the 12-month period that ended in April, more than 100,000 Americans died of an overdose. That's almost up 30 percent from the year before. We know drugs are a big problem in and around our community. That is why later today on Leading SA at 8 a.m., Bear County Sheriff Javier Salazar joining us live to talk about recent crime trends, recent investigations, and what to be on the lookout for. If you have any questions you would like to ask the sheriff, you can submit them right now. Just head to the Leading SA section of KSAT.com. Then join us later this morning, 8 a.m., to hear all the answers. Well, topping your morning headlines in China, a missing tennis star has reappeared in public at a youth tournament in Beijing after she was accused, after she accused a senior leader of sexual assault. Photos and video posted by China Open Management on social media made no mention of Peng Shui's disappearance or the accusation she was sexually assaulted by a former Chinese leader. The tennis star was shown standing beside a court waving and signing oversized commemorative tennis balls for children. The ruling party appears to be trying to diffuse alarm about her without acknowledging her disappearance. Comments on Chinese social media criticized the Women's Tennis Association and others who spoke up about Peng. Other stories we are following this morning. Protests taking place across the country after the verdict in the Kyle Rittenhouse murder trial. And we saw these protests through the weekend. All this comes after a total of approximately 26 hours of deliberations. The jury finding Rittenhouse not guilty on all charges. Rittenhouse was 17 in August of 2020 when he shot three people, killing two and wounding the third. Here's ABC's Rena Roy with reaction from across the country. Kyle Rittenhouse now a free man after the jury found him not guilty on all five charges. The first count of the information, Joseph Rosenbaum. We, the jury, find the defendant, Kyle H. Rittenhouse, not guilty. The 18-year-old emotional as the verdicts were read, hugging one of his defense attorneys. Rittenhouse claims he acted in self-defense as he shot and killed Joseph Rosenbaum and Anthony Huber and wounded Gage Grosskreutz during protests in August of 2020 over the police shooting of Jacob Blake. I don't think he could have won without taking the witness stand and telling his story. He didn't have baggage that a lot of sometimes criminal defendants have. He had no prior records, a clean history. Um, it was definite net plus. Huber's father believes this verdict sends the message it's okay for teens to walk around with AR-15s. I think we're all just in shock. We did not expect this. This was a this was just adding insult to injury. Following the verdict, President Biden called for peace. I stand by what the jury has concluded. The jury system works and we have to abide by it. But the vice president believes the system needs reform. I've spent a majority of my career working to make the criminal justice system 
more equitable and clearly there's a lot more work to do. There were several protests across the country, including Portland, Oregon, and New York City. Young black boys like Trayvon Martin are shot dead because they're carrying around Skittles. And someone like Rittenhouse is not guilty in all verdicts when he shot two people. Outside the courthouse in Kenosha, a few dozen demonstrators gathered to voice their opposition to the verdict, but there were those who supported the jury's decision. Kudos to Kyle. I'm glad he's free. I hope these people can respect the decision. Being an American is not mean you get a, get a court decision you like. It means you're going to respect the court decision you get. Rena Roy, ABC News, Kenosha, Wisconsin. Now to the latest on the volcano situation on the on Spain's Canary Islands. La Palma's erupting volcano continues to spew ash and lava overnight and into this morning. Air quality worsened on the island after a new overflow of the volcano. European Union scientists calculate that the molten rock has covered more than 2,000 acres, damaging more than 2,700 buildings. These Canary Islands, home to about 85,000 people. Remember, we first told you about the volcano erupting on September 19th. Officials say the prompt evacuations of more than 7,000 people helped avoid casualties. Well, millions of Americans are paying more to travel to their Thanksgiving destination this year, thanks to in part to higher gas prices, but that's not the only thing. You're right. You're also going to be forking out a lot more money for your Thanksgiving meal. The American Farm Bureau Federation says it will be 14% more expensive. The biggest reason for the increase, the turkey itself. Bird costs, they're up about 24% this year. We've seen price fluctuations anywhere from 88 cents per pound all the way up to $1.50 per pound. Um, so certainly there's there's a lot of variation that we're seeing at the, in the retail uh, space. And I think that's driving a lot of those concerns about shortages when when people are out shopping. Well, one way to save a little money this Thanksgiving is to be a picky shopper. Patty Santos actually just did a story on this and she talked to a local farmer and rancher and he said, Shop local, and they're cheaper than if you go to them at the store. There you go. Good to know. Help our local farmers. 638, 66 degrees out. Well, still ahead on GMSA, the American Music Awards are tonight. Right here on KSAT 12, we'll have a preview. And Monarchs, close to our hearts here on GMSA weekends. Now, government entity asking for you to report when you see them help with their migration patterns. Take a look outside with live cam 66 at 639. Sarah Spivey says we're going to expect a cool front later today. She'll explain when we come back. Good morning and welcome back. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas here in San Antonio. <laughs> All right. Well, the lights on the river walk are already illuminated. The H-E-B Christmas tree has arrived at downtown at Travis Park and plenty of drive through displays are about to open for the season. That's right. Alicia Barrera, join us live to give us a little preview. Good morning, Alicia. Good morning, Max and Sarah. Yeah, well, really, these holiday drive through displays have become well they became a big part last year of course with everyone trying to be socially distanced but still enjoy the holidays but it looks like they're really sticking around this Christmas season so take a look at what you can enjoy it's a great way to stay warm and cozy inside the car with your friends and family and maybe even pop on some holiday tunes on the radio I'm sure it sounds better than Max singing but nearly all the drive through venues also have a place for people to walk shop and eat if they want to enjoy the night on foot besides driving through down downtown to see the city's Christmas tree at Travis Park or the illuminated trees on the Riverwalk. There are more options for socially distanced holiday activities. Take a look at some of them. The Don Strange Ranch in Bernie opens on Friday. It's a mile long drive through display. It also features carriages, hay rides, food and shopping. Then there's Elf Acres. That's on the far west side. You can check out holiday lights and animated displays. Then Santa's Village also includes photos with Santa Claus, holiday treats and of course a gift shop. Then there's Santa's Ranch in New Braunfels. The drive through display has showcased more than 1.5 million lights. It's just off I-35 North and Really, there are so many more displays to see around town and really start getting in the holiday spirit. We have a list on KSAT.com. Reporting Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. That is fantastic. Thank you so much, Alicia. All right, now to a story that is very close to your heart. Monarch butterflies, special place in our hearts here on GMSA Weekends. Now researchers are calling on the public to report if you see a monarch butterfly in eight states, including right here in Texas, 
They're doing this to try to better understand the insect's migration and wintering behaviors. That's right. So scientists want to hear about sightings of monarchs from December 1st to March 1st, and observations should be reported at journeynorth.org. So the information may help conservation efforts by determining if the butterflies can spend the winter as non-breeding adults in the southern U.S. It could also shed light on how breeding during the winter may be affecting the butterfly's annual migration to Mexico. Monarch populations have declined significantly over the past two decades. Last year, the insect became a candidate for listing under the Endangered Species Act. So remember, if you see a monarch from December 1st to March, report it to journeynorth.org, and you can find that website on ksat.com. Absolutely. All right, so how many monarchs do you have right now? Um, well, I just released another one yesterday, so I'm still waiting on about two or three okay. more to emerge from the chrysalis. That's so exciting, Sarah. It's Proud fun. Every of you. morning going and seeing, oh, there's another one. <laughs> another one. <laughs> Our little monarch mom. Okay. Ah, I like that. Let's take a look outside. We can actually see outside this morning compared to yesterday morning when we had very dense fog around San Antonio. And we still have some areas of fog out there early this morning. It's just that visibility is, is fine at the airport. 67 degrees out there this morning with a dew point of 64. It is noticeably muggy out there. There. And again, around San Antonio, visibility is fairly okay, but you go further out to the east and you can see down in Gonzales or out in Gonzales, rather, visibility is down to a quarter of a mile. Now, over the next about an hour or so, we could still have some areas of patchy fog around San Antonio. And look at these temperatures. It's 67 degrees at the airport, 67 in New Braunfels, 67 in Del Rio. This time yesterday, we were waking up in the 40s and 50s, so a big 20 degree swing here. And speaking of a 20 degree swing, can you see where our cold front is? Up in the panhandle, temperatures are in the 40s. There's our cold front currently pushing toward Abilene and Midland, and it is going to be moving through San Antonio later this afternoon. So let me take you through the high res future cast that front arriving between 2 p.m. and 4 p.m. today with it. There is a small chance an off chance for an isolated shower or storm chance for rain really is only going to be about 20% around San Antonio, practically zero out toward Del Rio and Eagle Pass. But then south of San Antonio and south of Highway 90, about a 20 to 30% chance for isolated showers and storms as that front moves on through. Then one big thing you'll notice is that tonight, right around midnight, winds will be fairly breezy. In fact, it'll be windy with gusts of up to 35 miles per hour in places around San Antonio. So keep that in mind if you have any uh, light patio furniture or those inflatables out, out in the front uh, lawn, Christmas decorations. Uh, they may get tossed about uh, because of those winds gusty uh, from the north at about 35 miles per hour. As for our forecast today, it's going to stay fairly cloudy. We we may only see a few peaks of sunshine in the afternoon and a high temperature in the upper 70s is entirely possible. That front will move through right around 2 to 4 p.m. and then it'll become windy and a lot cooler. Temperatures will fall into the 50s by midnight. And then looking ahead, it's going to be nice and dry Monday and Tuesday with dew points in the 30s. So that means chilly mornings and comfortable afternoons for us on Monday and Tuesday. Humidity will be on the rise by Wednesday morning. We'll have more more fog and then Thanksgiving Day itself. We are expecting a cold front. That cold front will bring with it scattered thunder showers and uh, temperatures should stay in the 60s during the day on Thursday, Thanksgiving Day. And most of that scattered rain will likely be in the early morning hours. And then by Friday, it'll be breezy and cool. Black Friday itself, our high temperatures should only uh, top off right near 60 degrees. That's it. And in speaking of cool, next weekend looks chilly in the morning and uh, cool in the afternoons with highs only in the 60s. So a double dose of cold fronts this week going to be sending us up and down the temperature roller coaster and bringing us rain Thanksgiving Day. So Spivey, thank you so much. We praise the UTSA, we praise the Roadrunners, but folks up north in Austin, they're trying to snap a five game losing streak. They tried to do so against West Virginia in Morgantown. We saw both quarterbacks, Hudson Card and Casey Thompson. Yes, sir. remember, B. John Robinson out for the season. Ooh, they couldn't even lead at halftime. They are coming off five straight losses. Make it six. The only real highlight of the game, Xavier Worthy, who has been killing it all season. He had 
Seven catches, 85 yards, and a touchdown. But in the end, West Virginia wins big 31-23. Longhorns losing six in a row, Sarah Costa. Ugh, not a good time to be a Longhorns fan. No, it's all right. Rebuilding. It's okay. UTSA is doing great. They're doing great. 649, <laughs> 66 degrees now. Well, do you know what are the worst habits for your brain health? Some surprising info you need to know next. But first, quick look at birthdays. First up, Emilio. Oh, <laughs> love that love picture. You. Oh, happy birthday. All right, and this is Darlo. She'll oh. be celebrating her birthday on Tuesday. Ghost first go. Earth early <laughs> birthday. Ghost first go. Keep posting those birthday pictures. Ksat.com slash birthdays. Remember to include a name and an age. We'll be right back. Well, tonight, Americans will have the final say on who wins at the American Music Awards, with fans casting their votes this year on an unusual platform, TikTok. TikTok, AMA history and hit maker Cardi B hosting this year's show live from the Microsoft Theater over there in Los Angeles. ABC's Morgan Norwood has more on what to expect. The country's favorite musicians are taking the stage for this year's American Music Awards, the biggest show in the U.S. where the fans decide who takes home the top prizes. This year, it's up and it's stuck with show host Cardi B. The five-time AMA winner is up for three awards this year. My goal is just for people to have a good time. This is right here is like more like fun, like, eh! good time I like the good vibes I like to party I want to I want to like like wake people up so that's gonna be me okay. pop newcomer Olivia Rodrigo has the most nominations with seven you didn't mean what the driver's license star also has some fierce competition looking to beat her to the coveted title of new artist of the year including you, you 24k golden give you that's just a good you know Mask Wolf and the kid Leroy. We're all that I want and I still want you. The AMAs also adding in new categories, including favorite trending song, along with favorite gospel artists and favorite Latin duo or group. And it wouldn't be the AMAs without some unpredictable performances. Rapper Tyler, the creator, set to bring his theatrics to the stage. He's one of the most unusual, imaginative, uh, just out and out. How on earth did he think of that? But perhaps one of the most anticipated duos firing up the audience, Megan Thee Stallion and BTS, as they look to butter up the crowd with their first live performance of their remixed hit. Morgan Norwood, ABC News, Los Angeles. All right, well, it is well known that a poor diet and sedentary lifestyle, not only bad for your body, but it is also bad for your brain. But there are some lesser known things that could be wrecking your brain too. A Johns Hopkins study found mild hearing loss doubled the risk for dementia and people with a severe hearing impairment were five times more likely to develop dementia. So also some types of antidepressants, overactive bladder drugs, and some epilepsy medications can block certain actions. It's important for learning, it's important for memory, and it's important for attention. So without acetylcholine, we can't function properly. So a study in England found people who used these drugs had long-term impacts, a 50% risk of developing dementia. And do you like to hold a grudge? Who likes to hold a grudge? I know. A study from London found participants who repeatedly dwelled on negative thoughts had more of a certain kind of brain deposits, mm. deposits to their brain, and that biological markers of Alzheimer's disease. Oh, so skipping out on vaccines can harm your brain health. A Duke study found people ages 65 to 75 who got the flu shot actually lowered their risk for Alzheimer's by 25 to 30 percent. There you go. Time now, 656, 66 degrees out. And here's a look at what's coming up next on Good Morning America. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, chaos at one of the world's busiest airports, gunfire sending travelers into a panic. The manhunt happening just as millions of Americans set out to travel for Thanksgiving. What you need to know before heading to the airport or hitting the road. Plus, two weeks after her apparent disappearance, speculation surrounding tennis player Peng Shui's safety after she accused a Chinese leader of sexual assault as new videos raise more questions about her well-being. And tonight's American Music Award, 
Awards, a look ahead at the performances and the nominees, and Cardi B on her hosting debut. It's all ahead right here on GMA. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. A crash earlier this morning ends with one woman in the hospital and the driver now in custody. We'll explain what happened. Local groups across San Antonio are ready to kick off the holiday season by giving back to those in need. But a lot of volunteers are needed to do that. Just ahead on JMSA, we're on the city's far west side with more on how you can help today. Taking a look outside with live cam 66 degrees at 8 a.m. Sarah Spivey says we can expect a cool front later today. She'll explain in just a bit. Good morning, 8 o'clock this Sunday, November 21st. Thank you so much for joining us. We are all smiles, good vibes today. That is because UTSA won. Rocking UTSA colors. Yeah, birds up. Congratulations, 11-0. Yes, 11-0. And that last play, three seconds left. San Antonio to San Antonio connection. We're going to have the highlights. But first, checking in with Sarah Spivey. Sarah, is the fog going to clear? Yeah, and, and I got to do it. I got to do it. Meet, meet. Meet, meet. There we go. <laughs> You know, really awesome to see UTSA come away with that game last night. All right, let's go ahead and take a look outside. We do have clouds out there this morning, and even on the horizon, you can see that it's a bit hazy. There are some areas of patchy fog. It's especially dense, though, south and east of San Antonio. You can see that visibility is down to a mile in Gonzales, down to practically zero in Beeville and in Victoria, down to five-mile visibility in Pleasanton early this morning. And it's fairly warm to start the day. Temperatures are in the 60s. Dew point are very high as well. It is muggy out there, but as Sarah just mentioned, we are going to see a front this afternoon. That's going to take out the humidity and give us a really nice start to Thanksgiving week this upcoming week. For now, though, today it's going to be fairly cloudy and temperatures are going to be climbing into the mid 70s before that front arrives. Now we will see a few peaks of sunshine here and there, but all in all a fairly gray day. And once that front moves through this evening, our winds will be gusting from the north up to 30 to 35 miles per hour. As I just mentioned, that sets up a great Monday and Tuesday for us. But on Thanksgiving Day, we are expecting some rain. So we've got a lot to chat about in the forecast in a few minutes. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, a crash early this morning ends with one person in the hospital. The driver involved may now be facing charges. This is what we know right now. Police tell us around 3.30 this morning, two vehicles headed westbound on the frontage road to 410 between Parambital and Starcrest, a black vehicle trying to make a right hand turn suddenly changed, decided to go straight. That is when the light colored vehicle behind it crashed into it. Now, the people inside that black car not injured. The driver of the other vehicle taken into custody for possible DWI. His passenger taken to Bamsey at last check life threatening injuries. The family of a woman killed during a single car crash on the city's west side is remembering her. Brenda Lee Ibada died Friday morning after crashing her car on Highway 90 near Callahan Road. San Antonio police say she lost control of the truck and crashed into a trans guide sign. Ibada's mother and namesake says she thinks her daughter fell asleep at the wheel. If you feel tired, take a nap in your car or call somebody to take you home or somebody to drive you home. Ibada's family lit candles and wrote on balloons they released to honor her life. They say her arrangements will be made tomorrow, and Ibada's wish was to be cremated. New government research shows that Americans died of drug overdoses in record numbers across the country. In the 12-month period that ended in April, more than 100,000 Americans died of overdoses. That's up almost 30 percent from the year before. And we know drugs are a big problem in and around our community. So joining us in today's leading essay segment is Bear County Sheriff Javier Salazar. Good morning, Sheriff. Thank you so much for joining us. Good morning, guys. Thanks for having me. Just this week, your department made a meth bus around $320,000 worth of drugs found. And it just started as a routine traffic stop. What does the drug problem look like in and around our community? Well, I mean, look, I think ours is our problem here in San Antonio is just as bad, if, if not worse, than the rest of the country. Why? Because not only are we um, a, a destination, right, and drugs are ending up here, but we're also a major hub uh, for drugs coming into the country. They're stopping here, being redistributed outwards. But then also just by the fact that we're on so many major interstates, drugs are coming right through our uh, county on a daily basis. So, Sheriff, we have discussed gang violence and the cartels with you before. So is there still a heavy presence of that problem in our area? 
Uh, there is. There is. We're seeing our, our you know, more than our share of, of cartel activity, uh, but also just organized crime locally. Um, you know, we have an organized crime group that was formed up, uh, reformed and, and formed up earlier this year with with regard to that. We're stationed over at the TAG, uh, the Texas Anti-Gang Center. Uh, it's kind of a task force type setting. But we have a, an entire uh, group within the, the sheriff's office, uniform gang unit and uh, uh, plainclothes assets that are also working basically 24 seven to try to fight the problem. And speaking of gang violence, we also know gun violence, violent crimes historically bad the last couple of years. Are you guys still seeing that trend? And if so, why do you think that is? You know, I, I don't I don't know, Max. I'm not sure why we're, why we're seeing it. You know, here recently we saw a, a, a rash of carjackings and attempted carjackings. As we know, we had the one that SAPD hired, uh, handled in the quarry where that young lady was shot in the face. Uh, around that same time, we had another young man that was successfully carjacked of his car out on, out on the west side of the county. Uh, we were able to make an arrest in that, but we, we've we seen, uh, oh, and, and then shortly thereafter on a Sunday morning at a, at a Walmart off Foster Road, we saw an attempted carjacking by a 14 year old. It just seems that violent crime is on the rise. I mean, we're on top of it. We're working with our partners, federal, state, and local. Obviously the SAPD is gearing a lot of their efforts toward it as well. But, but yes, gun violence is on the rise. Speaking of gun violence, the last time you joined a sheriff, you talked about the constitutional carry law. Have you noticed any changes since that law has gone into effect? You know, we uh, legal guns have never been the issue, right? Legal guns are not a problem until the moment they're stolen, for example, or or, or fall into the wrong hands. Uh, you know, free, uh, fortunately, after that initial, we saw a, again a rash of stolen guns being used against our, our deputies. We did some awareness. We we did you all show, and we we were able to get people the word out to people that keep an eye on your guns twenty four seven. Thankfully, and I'm knocking on wood, we haven't seen stolen guns become as much of an issue now. That is good to hear. Now, we are just about five days or so away from Thanksgiving. We know last year was unique. Not that many people out and about, not many people driving and whatnot. Sarah brought it up earlier this morning. You know, a lot of people are going to be out seeing family. A lot of people are going to be drinking for the holiday season. Do you guys expect a rise in possible drunk drivers? And what is your message to the public for the holidays come about? Well, you know, unfortunately, drunk driving is, is a problem in, in Bear County 365 days a year. Uh, but but by virtue of that, if there's more traffic on the road, then there's going to be more drunk drivers on the road. So people just need to be out there on the lookout for that. There's no reason to drink and drive, uh, you know, Uber it, stay where you are, take a bus, get designated driver. And a designated driver means somebody that hasn't been drinking at all, not the most sober person in the car you know that's not that's not a designated driver so there's no reason for it uh definitely be on the lookout for for drunk drivers on the road but also as we're out and about doing our, our black friday shopping uh be extra cognizant of your personal space uh in, in the parking lot so we want to make sure that we're not lingering too long in your car uh get in get out and do whatever you need to do well, that's good advice there. Thank you so much, Sheriff, for making time for us all the time. So thank you so much. And for our viewers, you can watch this full interview later on KSAT.com this morning. Thank you, Sheriff. Thank you, guys. Be safe. Well, as the holiday seasons approach, a local group stepping up, helping out, helping those struggling with homelessness. They're providing a warm and festive meal all week. The group Humble to Serve Ministries, they've been preparing turkeys and so much more, distributing hundreds of Thanksgiving plates just this afternoon. Well, the group is meeting on the city's far west side at Marbach Christian Church. Alicia Barrera is live at the church with what's needed ahead of the event. Good morning, Alicia. Good morning. Well, Hubble to Serve Ministries is planning to serve over 400 people, I believe closer to 500. And this church has been nice enough to open up the, the doors of their kitchen. And you see behind me some of the group that has really made this happen. Regina Flores, she's been spearheading this, so to speak. So how did this idea to feed over 400 people even come about? And we already see the the, the materials in the background over here that you all have ready for today. Yes, actually, uh, what happened is that we used to be homeless ourselves, me and my husband, and uh, our ministry gives back to the community and um, on a daily basis we actually minister to a lot of homeless people and so we see that there's a pandemic going on with a lot of homelessness in the community everywhere we go so we know Thanksgiving is an important holiday and we want to give them hope you know so we want to go ahead and do that for them today so she was mentioning off camera that this started with a smaller a number 250 plates it's jumped up again close to 500 
What's the need for volunteers today? They can start showing up around 1.30 here off Marbach. We want as many volunteers as we can get, please. Um, we need uh, food to be distributed all over uh, San Antonio. We just don't want to hit one spot like downtown. We want to hit the west side, south side, east side, north side. We see it everywhere. Driving over here, I saw so many people that are homeless, that might be hungry, might be cold. We need blankets. If you want to bring blankets, gloves, socks, um, at least 50 plus would be good. I mean, just that would be great. Wonderful. Thank you so much. So again, you have the address on your screen right there where you can meet starting at 1.30 and really they'll be need needing those volunteers until that last plate is handed over. Reporting live, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Thank you so much, Alicia. Time now, 810, 67 degrees out. We'll still ahead on GMSA, the latest on an armed robbery that turned into a shooting at an El Paso airport. What we've learned so far. And we've talked about it throughout the morning. UTSA capitalizing on their perfect season. How it ended, why they're celebrating after the break. 67 degrees right now at 810. Some of that fog still lingering around. Sarah Spivey says we can expect humidity to drop as a cool front will come in later today. She'll explain that in just a bit. Good morning, welcome back and go UTSA. They have done it, clinching their first division title and they did so with a last second win over UAB 34-31, a wild end to an amazing game. Roan Orders played from behind just about the whole game at half. They were down 24-17 third quarter. Quarterback Frank Harris finds Zakari Franklin, record breaker, 56 yard touchdown pass and run to tie it up. 24 all Roadrunners actually take the lead 27 24 in the fourth quarter on a 49 yard field goal. But once again, the Roadrunners found themselves down 31 27 with just over five minutes to play. Oh, you can see the crowd going crazy. We've been telling people throughout the week, fill the dome. And here we go. Final play of the day. This is where it is. Low snap drop hits the ground. Frank Harris picks it, tipped, and then boom, a one-yard touchdown. Oscar Cardenas, three seconds left. That is the game winner. UTSA defeats UAB 34-30 win, winning the Conference USA West Division title, staying undefeated 11-0. But here's something that, that's never, ever wrong with my team. It's their effort. They, they never go away. And we'd say it all the time, a champion has the ability to play one play longer than his opponent, and we played one play longer than they did tonight. That was it. I saw the play claw, and uh, I knew I had a chance to, to give this team a win, and we executed not to where we won it, but it happened. The snap was low, so uh, that kind of threw the play off from Jump Street, um, and then I was rolling out to just try to figure out something, and uh, Oscar was still open, so I just you know threw it. Uh, he, t he got tipped, and he concentrated well, and I caught it. and. Uh, you know, let's play the game. Resilience, perseverance, determination. One play better than the other. UTSA now hosting the Conference USA Championship at the Alamo Dome December 3rd. But first, wrapping up the regular season in Denton next Saturday, taking on UNT North Texas. Game's at 1 p.m. Birds up. Also, Cowboys do play today. Cowboys play today, 2.30, taking on... There you go. Sarah Spivey's Sarah Spivey. favorite team. There we go. You, okay. okay, I don't want people to know <laughs> that I'm a Chiefs fan. Okay, she's today. a Cowboys fan. She's okay. a Cowboys fan. See, I'm we, sorry. We love I Pat Mahomes myself. here too, so you could you could root for. But you know what? It's all fair right. if we all love UTSA. Everybody so knows if you've been watching this show long enough, you know I'm a Chiefs yeah. fan. So yeah. may the best team win. Let's do that. All right, <laughs> take a look outside. Uh, we do have some areas of fog out there this morning, especially south and east of San Antonio. Visibility down to a mile in Gonzales. Even in Del Rio, visibility down to four miles, down to five miles in Yavaldi. And the reason for that is the temperatures and the dew points are right near each other. It is very warm for the start of the day here as, it, as far as the middle of November goes. It's 67 degrees. We usually see a high temperature right near 70 this time of year. So again, a very warm start to the day. 65 in Kerrville, 67 in Del Rio, 68 in Catula. And when you compare this to how we started off the day yesterday, yes, we had fog yesterday morning, but it was 15 to 20 degrees cooler to start the day yesterday. Uh, but again, a very uh, warm and humid air mass out there for us. But things are going to change today, all because of a cool front moving through. You can see
see all the rain associated with the same system out toward the east, but we're not going to see much rain today, if any at all. That front is to our north, currently pushing through Abilene and Midland. Temperatures are much cooler, uh, more than 20 degrees cooler up in Amarillo, where it's 43. And then this is the real kicker, much drier out there behind that front as well. So although it's very humid outside, that cool front is going to dry us out and make it very pleasant Monday and Tuesday of this upcoming week. Today, though, we are going to stay fairly cloudy, really only a few peaks of sunshine. That front will move through right at around 2 p.m., 4 p.m. Uh, time frame, and with it will come an opportunity for an isolated shower, but we're not going to be seeing widespread rain today by any means. The better rain chances do sit south of Highway 90 toward Catula, Beville, Victoria, and then again, that front will be well to the south by midnight. Here's the thing. It's going to get very windy behind that front. Winds are going to gust up to about 30 to 35 miles per hour late tonight. Uh, so again, any kind of light Christmas decorations, make sure they're tied down because uh, those winds will be very, very windy tonight into early Monday morning as well. Uh, so for today's forecast, we're calling for clouds for most of the day. We'll be at 73 at noon and then in the afternoon, there could be a few peaks of sunshine here and there. 76 for the high as that front moves through uh, and a small chance 20% for an isolated shower and then tonight temperatures will fall into the 50s and it will become windy gusts of up to about 30 miles per hour uh, so it's going to be nice and dry tomorrow and Tuesday with dew points in the 30s uh, so that means chilly mornings and comfortable afternoons and then by Wednesday humidity will be back we'll see some morning fog and on Thanksgiving Day we are expecting a front so before that front arrives Wednesday will be warmer in the 70s and then that front will move through Thanksgiving Day. Most of the scattered showers and storms will be during the first part of the day. And then by Friday afternoon, we're going to struggle to get out of the 50s on Friday afternoon. So it's going to be much cooler on Friday as you're doing some of your Christmas shopping if you're brave enough to go out <laughs> for Black Friday itself. So again, a, a bit of a double dose of cold fronts here for us. Chilly mornings tomorrow and Tuesday with comfortable afternoons. And then Thursday, hopefully we can get a little rain in the rain gauge. I know it doesn't come at a time that we necessarily want the rain Thanksgiving Day, but but it's in the forecast for us. We definitely do need the rain. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. 820, 67 degrees out. Well, coming up next, something we're all excited about here. Reese's released its largest peanut butter cup yet, but you might not uh. be able to get your hands on it. Sorry, Max. Details coming up after the break. Sorry, Max. And oh. anyone else who's a huge Reese's fan? Basically 80% of the country. I would say 95. <laughs> oh. Hershey announced that its limited edition 9-inch, yes, 9-inch Reese's Thanksgiving pie sold out within oh. hours of its release. It is the largest peanut butter cup ever made, weighing in at 3.4 pounds. That's just impressive. I like how they call it a pie. The company sold 3,000 pies for about $45 each. Hershey, like other candy companies, relies on impulse purchases to drive sales. They posted on Facebook, quote, looks like Reese's fans were really thankful for our new Reese's pie this year. It has now sold out. Okay, that one slice of pie, though, mm -hmm. how many actual, like, calories? Cups. Like, <laughs> like the actual, like, normal size Reese's peanut butter cups? Yeah. How many cups are in that one mm. slice? I think we're going to need a pie from Hershey. We do. Figure it out. Uh, this is our plea? Yes, this is our plea. Please send it. Thank you. Okay. We're thankful. <laughs> For you. 825, 67 degrees out. Well, there's still much more coming up on GMSA, including frightening moments at one of the nation's busiest airports. A man's gun goes off, scaring travelers, and now authorities are searching for that man. Plus, later in sports highlights from Brandon's huge win. Oh, next round of the playoffs. Oh, there we go. Got to keep it talking long enough to get the touchdown in there. We're going to take a look at some birthdays. This is Ariana, eight years old. Happy birthday. All right, and here we go. Thencha celebrating her birthday today. Happy birthday. Remember to keep posting your birthday pictures. KSAT.com slash birthdays. Remember to include a name and an age. You're watching GMSA. We'll be right back. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Sunday. I'm Max Massey. I'm Sarah Costa. It's Sunday, November 21st. We just did a story about the racist peanut butter Pie. uh, pies yeah. that are sold out, and I am so hungry. I can't stop thinking about them. 
But Sarah Spivey, she is one of my favorite co-anchors mm. because she made all of us. What did you make us, Sarah? Oh, yeah, it's in the oven in the break room. <laughs> <laughs> Bourbon sweet potato casserole. Bourbon. With candied pecans and bacon on top. So Thank you, Sarah. I'm kind of experimenting with the GMSA crew because I have to <laughs> I made this for a bigger Thanksgiving meal tonight. So let's see. They've got to give me their honest opinion. We'll be honest. All right, I know you will, Sarah. <laughs> okay, so let's take a look at the pollen count today. No problems here. This is uh, just freshly in, and you can see that molds are low. They're the only allergen present today. And, you know, that's impressive because it has been mighty humid outside, and usually when we see higher humidity, we see the mold numbers go up quite a bit, but that's not the case today. Outside right now, cloudy skies, and there are some areas of fog out there this morning. Visibility is down to half a mile in Gonzales, down to seven in Pleasanton, down to five in Uvalde, and down to four in Del Rio. Coming up, we'll take a look closer to the metro area, and you can see some areas of fog there as well. It's going to be a fairly cloudy day, a few peaks of sunshine here and there for us, but generally more clouds than sun. And we are going to see a cool front move through today between about 2, 4 p.m. Temperatures will top off in the mid to upper 70s. That front will move through. It'll switch our winds around to the north, gusts up to about 30 miles per hour and bring us a lot drier air and nicer weather as we start Thanksgiving week. We do have the chance for rain though Thanksgiving Day, so a lot to unpack in the forecast coming up in a bit. Sarah and Max. Thank you, Sarah. And your top stories Pleasanton ISD mourning the death of their superintendent. Dr. Matthew Mann passed away from a heart attack. Now, the district made the announcement on their Facebook page just yesterday. He suffered a heart attack earlier in the week. He never fully recovered. In a statement, the district spokesperson said, quote, Dr. Mann was a dynamic leader who made deep connections with people of Pleasanton ISD and the community, and he will be greatly missed by all of us. End quote. Dr. Mann had been with the district since 2012. In your morning headlines, some scary moments at an airport in Atlanta. Authorities say a passenger awaiting a bag search at the Atlanta airport's main security checkpoint reached in the bag and grabbed a firearm and it went off, causing chaos among travelers. The Transportation Security Administration says it happened Saturday afternoon at Hartsfield Jackson Airport, but it was not an active shooter incident. Officials say the passenger ran away and exited the airport. Officers are now looking for the suspect to arrest him. They identified him as 42 year old as a 42 year old convicted felon. The FAA ordered a temporary ground stop on flights. Normal operations resumed less than two hours later. And speaking of airports, as millions of Americans prepare to travel over Thanksgiving holidays, many are also lining up for COVID booster shots now that the CDC has authorized those boosters for everyone 18 and older. ABC's Elwin Lopez has more on the new rollout. This morning, that extra COVID-19 shot in high demand as Americans gear up for the holidays. I'm really happy about it because the holidays are coming up and I'd, I'd like to feel a little safer being around people. The CDC clearing the way for anyone 18 and older to roll up their sleeves for an added dose six months after their last one. We are seeing more breakthrough infections. That is expected to increase uh, in the coming months because of the winter weather. This comes as 34 states are now seeing a surge in new infections. The U.S. averaging more than 94,000 cases a day. That's 20,000 more than a week ago. In New Mexico, healthcare workers are at their breaking point. Our situation right now is dire. Most of these patients are unvaccinated. This is overwhelming our healthcare system. And in Connecticut, the gravity of battling COVID-19 still very real for Glenn Merritt III. When I wasn't able to talk, my body wouldn't move. Merritt was in a coma for four months after getting infected with the virus back in March. I wanted to get the vaccine, but here in Connecticut, they were doing it by age groups, and my age group wasn't available. It wasn't until last month that the 26-year-old was released from Gaylord Specialty Hospital, relearning how to walk, and now on oxygen seven months after he was infected. Dialysis, rehab, constant pain. It's, it's not a way anybody would want to live. So get the vaccine and just stay safe. That was Elwin Lopez reporting. Well, this morning, police in El Paso still not made any arrests following that deadly shooting near the city's airport. 
It happened late Friday night in a long term parking lot. So far, El Paso police are calling it an aggravated robbery, saying the victim was a 49 year old man. Sources say the victim was a Southwest Airlines employee who was changing a tire in an employee parking lot. That's when he was shot and killed. A police spokesperson says as of now, the preliminary investigation indicates this was not a random situation and there is not a threat to the airport. Southwest Airlines later commented saying, quote, this is a heartbreaking, tragic loss for the Southwest team, end quote. A new report from a group that oversees the reliability of the nation's electrical sector says Texas is still at risk of blackouts for this coming winter season. The North American Electric Reliability Cooperation said this week Texas could have a nearly 40 percent shortfall in available power while trying to meet demand in the event of another severe winter storm. The warnings come after Governor Greg Abbott and the new leadership of the state's electric grid just stated that they're confident the lights will stay on this time. The good news, forecasters say it's very unlikely to see another similar extreme weather event in Texas this year. Well, local groups across the city are ready to kick off the holiday season, and they're doing it by focusing on those who need it most. This morning, Humble to Serve Ministries is meeting on the city's far west side to feed over 400 people. That's right. So they have the food, they have the materials they need. However, they do need more volunteers. Alicia Barrera joins us live outside of Marbach Christian Church with more on today's event. Alicia. Good morning. Well, the distribution itself kicks off at three, but again, Max, Sarah, you mentioned it. The big need is volunteers. Volunteers are asked to show up here around 1.30. And I want to kind of highlight the group here. Joe in the blue here has been helping with the cooking. And then the team in the background you see is over in ministry. And then Regina Navarro, she's been helping also with the preparing. So in her trunk, you see here uh, just the materials that they'll be using. You started off with 15 turkeys, and then that grew to so many that you're able to y'all are going to be able to serve more than 500. The big need for volunteers. Yes, there is a big need for volunteers. We need uh, volunteers to come and help with serving the plates. Um, we need volunteers to come and help and distribute out the plates all over San Antonio. We just want to focus in one area. There's so much need all over the city. Uh, we want to go to west side, uh, east side, south side, north side. Um, you know, downtown, under bridges. Um, but, you know, we want you to take some caution with that as well. Wear your mask, wear your gloves if you need. We'll, we'll have some of that provided here. Um, we want you all to just experience what we experience on a daily doing ministry work. So I want to ask you, uh, with, with handing over a plate, you say it's not just that action. You and your husband were actually homeless, experiencing homeless just four years ago to the date. Their anniversary was November 13th. So congratulations for getting this far <laughs> and doing so much for the community. But also, what do you hope to inspire today to those that you're able to reach? We want to let them know that they're not alone out there. We want to let them know that with love and with uh, the word of God, um, with salvation, us giving them, you know, a chance, you know, them giving us a chance that we can bring them, you know, some hope and not only a meal, but, you know, some kind of help out there because we do have a lot of resources. We we do um, associate with a lot of organizations that can get them off the street, provide a, a home and everything else. Wonderful. Thank you so much. So again, there you have it. Some of the crew behind Humble to Serve Ministries. They need your help, so I hope you can make it out here. Marbach Christian Church. Just put it on your Google Maps and it'll lead you here. Reporting live, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Alicia. Well, the University of Incarnate Word, it's all lit up. Yesterday was a 35th annual Light the Way Holiday Festival. Steve Spreester was the event's MC and his Nightbeat co-anchor, Stefania Jimenez, was there to join him. This year, the event was back in person. Last year, they did a drive through event because of the pandemic. But organizers were happy to welcome everyone back this year to experience the holiday event in person. We're just so happy to welcome people to the University of Incarnate Word. We'd love them to get to know our community, to be on the campus, to know where we are in San Antonio, a little bit more about what we do. So it's a really great opportunity for us to connect with everyone in the community. And if you weren't able to make it out last night, you can still enjoy the holiday lights at UIW's campus through the new year. Time now, 839, 67 degrees out. Go Brandeis! That's right, Brandeis volleyball team did it. They are state champs. We have highlights from the huge win still to come. And another local college team doing big things on the field. Incarnate Word also clinches their conference title. Details still ahead. 
And taking a live look out at the Alamo City 67 now. What is the rest of the weekend? What does Thanksgiving week look like? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey. Good morning, welcome back and happy Sunday. 67 degrees this morning. We've been spoiled with the weather recently. We really have, but I don't really like the humidity or the fog in the morning. It really <laughs> messes with my hair, Sarah. But you said that should be clearing up soon later today. Yeah, I mean, this afternoon we're going to have a cool front move through. That's going to sweep the humidity away, uh, but it is going to make it windy. So hair, bad hair days can just put a hat on or <laughs> just anchor down, <laughs> anchor down. That's a good, good advice there. Like a look outside. It is cloudy. You know, yesterday we spent most of the day under clouds here in San Antonio and today's going to be fairly similar. We will see peaks of sunshine here and there, but it's generally going to be a fairly cloudy day. 67 degrees outside winds from the south southwest at about uh, five miles per hour and closer to San Antonio. You can see that there are some areas of fog. It's just not quite as dense as it was yesterday morning. Visibility down to six miles at Stinson, down to five in Castroville and down to five in Hondo. A wider view here. Visibility practically zero in Gonzales. So dense fog out in Gonzales and in Hallettsville. Visibility down to a quarter of a mile in Victoria, down to zero in Beeville as well. Visibility lower in Del Rio from some haze on the horizon there too. It is a warm start to our day. Temperatures are in the mid 60s uh, and even in the upper 60s in many places like in Pleasanton where it's 69 degrees, 68 in New Braunfels, 67 in Del Rio and 64 in Rock Springs. A wider view you can see where the front is. Look up toward Amarillo and Lubbock. Temperatures in the 40s there in the 50s in Midland and Abilene as that front is just starting to push through there. We can expect this front to move through San Antonio this afternoon. Uh, so we're still going to have a warm day and again a day with a lot of clouds out there. Uh, well, when that front moves through 2 p.m. 4 p.m. a chance for an isolated shower, but it doesn't look like we're going to have a good chance for healthy rain with this front by any means. Better rain chances slightly south of Highway 90, but again not expecting any uh, uh, heavy rain with this system moving through at all uh, by any means. It's just going to get windy behind that front tonight. Winds could gust up to about 30 to 35 miles per hour. This is a look at midnight, so expect some wind. And if you have any light patio furniture or any Christmas decorations, they may need to be anchored down a little bit more because of those gusty winds from the north up to about 35 miles per hour. So again, today's forecast calls for a fairly gray day with a few peaks of sunshine here and there. 20% chance for an isolated shower from 2 p.m. through about 8 p.m. That front will move through and then it'll become windy. Temperatures will fall into the 50 50s by midnight and by the start of the day tomorrow morning, it's going to be chilly. Dew points will only be in the 30s Monday and Tuesday, so that's very dry. So that means cold mornings in the 40s and 50s and comfortable afternoons near 70 degrees tomorrow and Tuesday. Then we'll see the humidity return briefly Wednesday and for the start of Thanksgiving and on Thanksgiving Day, we're going to get a front moving through and that front is going to come with a chance for rain. Now I know it comes on Thanksgiving and uh, ideally we wouldn't have any rain on Thanksgiving, but that's just where the forecast falls this week. A scattered showers and a few thunder showers as well. There 40% chance Thursday, mainly during the first part of the day, 68 for the high and then behind that front, it's going to be breezy and cool on Friday, Black Friday, temperatures will struggle to get out of the 50s for most of the day. So it is going to be uh, feeling a lot more like fall and early winter on Friday itself. So double dose of cold fronts this week. The first one moving through today makes things feel more pleasant. The second one on Thanksgiving brings a chance for rain and knocks those temperatures down significantly. Max, what's going up with sports? All right, so we've been talking about UTSA throughout the morning. Huge win yesterday, but there was a lot of football action going on yesterday. UIW claiming the Southland Conference title with a huge win over Houston Baptist. Take a look. The Cardinals got off to a great start. 35 points in the first quarter alone. That included a pick six by Moses Reynolds. Stepped in front of the pass, took it 25 yards. The John Jay grab puts UIW up 14-0. Four minutes into the game, a few plays later, the Cardinals offense go to work. Quarterback Cameron Ward slinging it. C.J. Hardy, 25-yard score. 21-0, the Cardinals would go on to win the game. Huge 55-14 on the road, wrapping up the regular season. They are now waiting for the selection show later this morning for the playoffs. All right, Trinity Tigers season, it is over. Falling short to the undefeated Mary Harden Baylor. First round of the Division Three National Tournament. 
Tigers down at 6-3 in the fourth quarter, trying to get a stop on fourth and one. A little over two minutes left in regulation, but the Crusaders call game. That was a 17-yard touchdown run. The final, 13-3, but still a great season for the Tigers. Taking a look from other of our favorite schools. Here we go. Texas A&M putting on a show yesterday, winning huge 52-3. And then Texas losing six in a row, the latest in Morgantown, losing it to West Virginia. Here we go from college to high school. Second round of the high school football playoffs wrapping up last night. Number one, bring it. Brennan. Ooh, there we go. Class 6A Division 1. The Bears strike first, third and six at the 10. Quarterback Ashton DeBose keeping it himself. Breaks the tackle in the backfield. That's an end zone. First points of the game next. Brennan possession. More offense. DeBose escaping the pocket. Wait for it. Look at a little slow mo here. And finds a wide open. Oh my goodness, he is too open. Chase Campbell in the end zone. 23 yard score, 14 0 lead. Brandon would roll past Los Fresnos, 63 10. They are into the next round. All right, in a Class 6A Division 2 matchup, number nine, Taft. The Raiders trail 17 0 in the third quarter, fourth and 12. Quarterback Justin Hurt. Finding Julio Sanchez makes two defenders miss along the sidelines, cutting up field, 20-yard score. Huge play, making it 17-7, but would not be enough for Taft to get the win. Falling short, 27-24. Lanier also playing yesterday. They, too, would go home without the W, 42-20, falling to McAllen Memorial. Huge congrats to the Brandeis volleyball team winning the UIL Class 6A state title yesterday in Garland, a first in the program's history. Broncos down two sets to one against Keller, rallied to force a fifth set on match point. Kaylee Ferris, Layla Smalls shot off the block and out. That is the clincher. Brandeis wins the state title three sets to two. So surreal, you know, we've worked, this is something I've worked for, you know, ever since I stepped foot in the brand nice stores and all the hard work, all the pain, all the tears, all the, everything's been worth it. Not too many people get to this moment, especially with a team of, what, 10 or more seniors. So, you know, just to be with all my best friends and win the state title, it's, it's amazing. It is amazing. Another congrats to a local school, John Paul II Catholic High School in shirts. Their volleyball team winning the Class 4A state championship. So congrats to everyone. Oh, so exciting. You can just seal the jubilation in their Way faces. to represent our San Antonio area. Love it. Way All to right. go, girls. Time now, 851, 68 degrees out. We'll be right back. Thanksgiving is almost here, but you don't need to spend days in the kitchen coming up tomorrow on GMSA. Some easy hacks you need to know before your holiday gathering, a lot of which will save you some time. All right, we've been talking about a lot of about butterflies lately, so researchers are asking the public to report any sightings of monarch butterflies. That's what a monarch looks like. It's on your screen right now in Texas and in seven other states. Scientists want to hear about sightings from December 1st to March 1st. You can submit your observations at journeynorth.org. Researchers say the information may help conservation efforts by determining if monarchs can spend the winter as non-breeding adults in the southern U.S. Monarch populations have declined significantly over the past two decades. We do have molds present in today's pollen count. They're low, though, 370. Uh, and looking at the forecast, mainly a gray day, a few peaks of sunshine here and there. That front will move through in the afternoon, bringing a small chance for rain, but really allowing for the humidity to get out of here. In fact, tomorrow morning, uh, it's going to be chilly with comfortable tomorrow in the afternoon with low humidity. Ditto weather on Tuesday, and then a front is going to move through Thanksgiving Day. And so that is going to bring us a chance for some showers and storms early on Thanksgiving, but making it feel a lot cooler by this next weekend. Here's the thing, though. If it's nice out, you throw the football. If not, you stay in, you watch the Cowboys. Yeah, and be grateful for the rain. <laughs> well, go Cowboys. Way to go. Um, Brandeis, Brandeis. John Pope II. And UTSA. And UTSA. <laughs>